Hello guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hard Tongue Family Farms. And today, Happy New Year everybody. I know I'm way behind on videos, but you guys should be just about caught up by now. It is January 2nd, and you know what time it is guys? It's time to start moving some more grain. So I actually personally have sold some grain these last couple days. We actually had the bid get up close to $5, and it's not great. My break-even price is a little bit into the fives, but you know what? I don't see it getting up there really anytime soon, and I gotta sell my grain by mid-February. I'll get into that a little bit later. But so I'm gonna start uh, offloading some grain. I got 24 loads to haul. No. 22 lows to haul between my dad and myself. So I need to get that going before uh, mid-February. So I got a month and a half to move 22 loads. It's gonna take a lot because the processor we go to is not very reliable lately. Last year especially, but I'm hoping this year they'll be better. Anyway, besides the point, let's get, get up there. I'm going to uh, start up and take Jeff's truck. I'm going to head over to our Delmore elevator, the, the elevator we work with, and then we'll uh, start hauling some grain today. See what else we get into. Time to check oil and for a cold start. When we were running this truck today, the good truck is on the uh, bowl rack, and my truck doesn't have heat. So it would not work out too well for this guy. And my sanity and the frost that would need to burn off. Oil is good. Cold start time. Hopefully she fires. So got the uh, shop cleared out the back of the shop that's right the 93 lives it's only been about a year but we just got a couple other things to do to her and then she'll be ready to go all and that's what I mean so I that's the only truck I could take because that trucks on the bull rack that's gonna be hauling some cattle yeah it feels weird seeing this Alrighty, let's head over to Delmer. Local elevator where we sold some grain. Busy place here this morning. So it looks like here's where we're gonna be getting loaded up. Got two trucks in front of me. So my goal is to get four loads in today. It's probably gonna be a stretch. Just all gonna depend on how busy ADM is gonna be, but that's the goal. So up here at the elevator in Delmer, Iowa. Gonna be getting filled up here. Out of the, uh, they have, they basically, it's an old feed mill there, but they got four little hoppers they can fill off of. A few trucks here this morning. I think there's four in front of me. Basically, we're just uh, getting filled up with these double augers here. So it should be pretty quick, but just sucks I gotta wait. Should have woke up earlier. Now's my turn. Let's go get filled up. Just pulling in. Let's see how long this weight is. It's probably not good. It's not. Holy crap. Ah, uh, yep. Trucks are back up in the staging. That's going to be a two hour wait. Uh, what do you do? Woo, I'm going to be lucky to get two loads in. Ouchie, ouchie, ouchie. This is probably a three hour long wait. Basically, so before the probe, there's a staging lot. So you got the main lot up there, which is a parking lot. You can fit probably six trucks wide, seven trucks wide by maybe 10 long. Then you got the line to go out here. Well, when this gets full, they got an overflow lot up on top where you can fit a couple rows. And everything's just about full all the way back up to Highway 30. Ouch, 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 ouch. I was hoping to get four loads in. 
I'm gonna back my goal down to three loads in today. I, I, I don't know. Tamper. I wonder what that thing is. Huh. Something that the railroad does to fix its tracks. Well, this is gonna be fun. Hey, guys, the left of me are moving. I have no idea where I'm at in relative to this line, if they're gonna work west or what, but that's at least a good sign that people are moving. I'm hoping that the trucks in front of me go next. Because basically how you keep your lays in line here is you just gotta follow who goes in front of you. And I can already tell you right now that this guy to my right is not next because he loaded in front of me at the elevator and he was in here 20 minutes before me. Oh, sorry, never mind, I lied. Scratch that. But anyway, you basically just follow the truck that you had in front of you and you just wait for them to go. That's essentially what you do. And then if you do have to start a new line, you just put your flashes on to let the person coming in behind you know, hey, you're supposed to follow me. Hey, it is me. Sweet, let's go probe. Then I'll be an hour past that. That's the, the line right now is at 58 minutes. Getting probed. Just got probed. One tree, a number inside. I don't say this too often. A straight truck pulled by a pup, pulling a pup trailer. I don't see that too often at all. Max and Elvin. And now we sit and wait again. Shut the truck off because I'll probably be sitting here for about a half hour or so. We'll see, it's uh, 10.48 right now. Hopefully I'm dumped and out of here by 12 o'clock. That's the goal. Well, at least it's not horrible. I mean, things are moving. They have to have all three dumps open, that's for sure, because when I first got up here, that line was full, this line was full, and we just started this line, and probably 10 trucks from the front. But now, that line is gone, this line is about half gone, and that line is just starting to move, to fill up again, so my line is full. I don't know, a lot going on here. I'm not always the greatest at explaining things and wordsing, but you know what? We're here for probably another hour or so. My goal, like I said, originally was to get four loads in. I don't wanna get three. That would be a nice day. It's not ideal, but it would be nice. Okay, so that truck left the elevator about 45 minutes in front of me. So that means that I'm probably about 45 minutes from dumping. Hopefully if everything goes good. Yeah, look at this thing. You don't see a whole lot of tandem trailers pulling pups around my area. You don't see hardly at all. It's actually pretty neat. You see them out west quite a ways. And when I say, excuse me, when I say a pup, it's basically just like a trailer, a second, a secondary trailer. So like some guys out west actually have like a 40 foot trailer and then pull a pup behind it. But this guy's, you don't, you don't see that in my area a lot. A, because of the hills, you won't be able to find a truck with enough horsepower to pull it. And B, you just, I think, uh, I don't know if you run into axle limits or if other states have different, I'm pretty sure other states have different laws than Iowa, where it allows them to carry more. Two trucks left. Look at this Pete. Well, it's been 25 minutes and we're just starting to move again. So let's see if I can get dumped in 35 minutes. I'm, wow, this yard is completely clear. I don't think I've ever seen this yard so clean. Basically like there's like seven or eight tracks here and they usually have just cars staging. But I'm guessing they're gonna be doing some maintenance on them. The only reason why I could see that it'd be clear, and we did see some uh, some maintenance vehicles earlier today. That's kind of what he tracked. Eight and nine, pretty impressive. It is said the outbound scale is not working, so that's gonna shut us down a little bit. That's neat. I wonder how fast those trucks that are outfitted to go on the, on the rails can go. Uh, everything's down. That's neat. All the scales and stuff are down. Don't hear them on the truck side. My hunch is right. They have a bunch of railroad ties there. That's basically every foot or so they put a big board down which helps spread the weight of the uh, train tracks out. They'll be replacing this entire yard it looks like. Now oh, we're finally moving again. Uh, hopefully I'll be dumped in about 10 minutes. what I say? 43 or 48 is when I said an hour. It's uh, 30, 11.39 right now, so I might even be able to get it then. I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to dump. There's that tandem dump, and he just opened a big door and just letting it all flow out. But I'm gonna go ahead and scan in so that way they know what, what hop I'm gonna dump at. 
gonna go prep, like drop my air and get my uh, crank on there. Just got reloaded, heading back south to go sit in the three hour line again. Woo! So fun. Coming into Clinton and I see two applicators putting on line right now. Mine is that big white puff coming out the back. It's not fertilizer, it's more to help your pH levels in your soil. Which I will be doing this as well this year, so we'll be talking about it a little later. But essentially, the long and the short of it is, if you don't have good pH, you're basically wasting money on your fertilizer. So, we'll get into that in a future video. Well, this is a much better site. So, I'm at 1 o'clock. Oh, geez, I close to 2 o'clock now. 145 right now. And when I came on here around 10, that driveway was all full up on top, and there was trucks all the way back here. So, already much better. The app still says an hour 20, so we'll we'll see how long I actually have once I get up here, but I'm hopeful. Hopefully I'll be able to get one more in. Oh yeah, this is much better. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ten trucks before the probe as opposed to about a hundred last time. Well, um We haven't moved. I don't know what's going on. The secondary lot's full, or sorry, not the secondary lot, but the the runway or whatever they call it is full or what. I have no clue, but we haven't moved in about 10 minutes, so my dream of getting a third load in here is uh, rapidly eroding. North Dakota? Huh? Very confused with that one. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yay! Down to two dumps, so we are not going to be moving very fast at all. By at all, I mean, oh my gosh, there are so many trucks. Yep, two loads is all I'm going to do today. This is fun. Getting the sample taken. And now we sit for probably an hour and a half until I move. That's my guess. It's 2.30 right now. But right side guys, guess what time it is. I just told you what time it is. But lunchtime brought me some ham sandwiches. So I haven't given you guys an update on grandma, but long and short of it is she has not and is not doing good. She uh, fell and broke her hip oh, a month ago, a couple weeks ago now. She's in a uh, rehab facility right now and it's just, it's just been tough for her. And I just found out she got COVID a couple days ago. So. It's just, I haven't seen her in almost a month. I need to get on. I was planning on seeing her a couple days ago, but she got COVID that day. So it's just, it's been a rough go. So we appreciate all the constant prayers for grandma. She's been off the farm more days since September than she probably ever has been in her life. So it's just been, it's been tough for her. It's been tough for all of us. So anyway, I appreciate the constant prayers guys. And now uh, back to my lunch. Well, this is turning into a disaster of a day. It is 4.15 and i haven't moved in an hour and a half Whew. i'm out of here by seven it's gonna be a good deal disaster of a day man there's guys coming down from wisconsin that's how you know so they had a really high bid in this place so all the different people that are accepting buying corn in the area they all use what's called basis to basically say okay chicago border trade board is five dollars but you know to account for the logistics cost i'm going to give a basis of minus 20 cents so i'm actually going to pay you 400 eighty dollars a four dollars and eighty cents a bushel for every bushel you pay bring in so all these different places have different uh bases well adm had a positive 20 basis and i guarantee you that's what brought all these people out of the road all these people out of the woodwork from instead of drawing people from an hour away we got people from two hours away like wisconsin <sighs> And that just makes it a very fun day for ourselves. Oh, that's how many people are here. Way too many for a half hour after they closed. They closed at 5.30. We still have this many people, it's ridiculous. <sighs> what do you do? But you know what though? I'm gonna be happy because I could be dead right now. I could be worse. I could be in a truck without heat for seven hours. That also would be worse. So think to be worse, guys. You guys look at the bright side, the positive instead of Getting mad about sitting in line for eight hours. Woo! We're finally moving towards the bridge. Woo! Might be able to get there by, or get back by, I don't know, maybe eight o'clock, hopefully. 
Well, at least now I can see the dump. That's a plus, so hopefully I'll be gone in an hour. But the record of me waiting, waiting in lines is about, uh, what is, I think it was right around five hours. And that was in Cedar Rapids. Uh, I'm probably gonna beat that today. And there's a uh, engine crew, a train crew that's gonna be swapping out here soon. So two things, one, that train's moving. Empty coal train heading west to a coal mine. And two, I thought I heard them say that the uh, truck dumps are opening up now. That would be awesome, that would really speed us up. We'll see if it actually is or not. Got in here at 1.30 and it only took till about six o'clock, ouch, to see this. So I'll be out of here in about five hours. They did open up one truck dump, nice. So we got two dumps going guys, woo, we're making progress. <laughs> that bucket has seen better days, or half a bucket. Two left, so I dump. So close. So close. It is 6.30 and I just got out of here. Have you Five ever hours. Yuck. No, uh, well, I've been monkeying around at the processor. Curtis has been getting a lot done. He's been chiseling away. We are not, we are technically snow tilling. There's snow on the ground. But Curtis is uh, working away chiseling this 80 acre field we got west of Pat's house. He's been uh, going hard on it. And we've been trying to get all the chiseling done that we can. We're down to a couple farms left, that's about it. He's making good progress. Uh, Nathan's gonna hop in the other chisel here shortly as well. And there's Nathan, it's kinda hard to see, but he's heading down the gravel road with the other chisel to go start another field. We got all the chiseling done at the main farm that we wanted to, I believe. I believe Curtis got all the butches done, so everything at the main farm is done. Now we basically are going to start branching out. All done. Let's go ahead and pick up my stuff while this engine's cooling down. I put on 132 miles today. That is pretty horrible for a 11 hour day. Be good if I was only hauling five mile round trips, but I was not doing that. Ooh, heck happened there? A flat spot for something. Well, you put in a good day's work, even though it wasn't a long day. Well, it was a long day. I don't know, it wasn't necessarily a good day either. But it is what it is, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> Ooh. I hear the cat C18 engine humming a mile away. That means it's going pretty good. He wasn't sure if uh, over next door was gonna go or not. If that wasn't gonna go, he was gonna go down by Curtis because Curtis is for sure chiseling away. So hopefully those guys can knock another 100 acres out of chiseling tonight. And then, yeah, we'll go see, uh, see what else is around. Hmm, I wonder what this could be. I don't know. Well, they got a load of cattle in the morning, so they gotta get up at five to sort cattle so Pat can get going with it. So that's what they gotta do. And I just remembered I'm going to check out how to pull data off of the uh, scales we had in our grain carts. Pat wanted to do that for record keeping. Not sure exactly what for, but he asked me to look into it, so I'm gonna look into it. I am the uh, data guy on the farm, so I will do my best. I think the grain cart's in here. Yeah, there she is. Let's go ahead and go take a look. <sighs> She's a little cold in here. The coyotes are going absolutely crazy back there. Probably hard for you guys to hear them, but man, they're going nuts out back. Well, that took a little bit, but I got all of the uh, data off of that scale head, so that's good. I'll go find the new Holland. I think it's down at Pat's place. I'll do the same thing to that guy, and then we'll probably call it a night. Like I said, not, a greatest, not the greatest day I've had in the world, but also not horrible, especially because it's January 2nd and the guys are out chiseling. So we're at least getting something done. We are prepping our 2024 corn crop. So again, what we are doing, guys, is when we do corn on corn, we like to bury our stalks, bury that residue there because corn generates a lot of trash after you combine it. Because if you think about it, corn grows 10, 12 feet tall at times. Let's see here. Never mind. Just ran into Curtis there. He's grabbing death. But uh, he says that the scales are probably not hooked up. Well, that kind of sucks, but yeah, it is what it is. So I'm gonna probably call it a night then. 
those guys are gonna keep uh, chiseling away, knocking out our corn crop, because I, oh, sorry, as I was saying before. So when we do corn on corn, so we wanna plant corn into our next, into a previously harvested corn crop, we need to bury that residue. We need to get rid of that because our corn planter and our corn plants just will not be able to do as well. We've tried, we've tried trials and everything like that. We could no-till like we do our soybeans. All right, just gotta plug this guy in. We could no-till like we do our soybeans. And obviously no-till is just right what it says. We don't really do any tillage, but for corn, we, like I said, corn is a little bit more finicky. Beans, you could just sprinkle it on the ground and they grow. Corn, you gotta be a little bit more careful. You know, getting a, getting a right emergence, right seed placement, right depth, all that fun stuff with minimal trash is, is uh, very necessary for corn. But we'll get into that in spring planting videos, so I don't wanna bore you guys too much. I really appreciate you guys watching. Take care, take it easy, stay safe, and ta-ta for now.